In this video, I'm going over installing a printer in Linux and then also utilizing the CUP service so any Unix-based system and Windows-based system can connect to that printer either through your Linux or Mac OS system. So first off, let's go ahead and discuss what CUPS is. C-U-P-S, Common Unix Printing Service. So with that out of the way, that means Mac OS and Linux pretty much use the same service. And for the most part, that's true. However, there are some big distinguishers here that I want to just get out of the gate. So running CUPS and installing the printer using CUPS acts as a print server. What that means is all the computers around your computer and your computer itself can utilize that service to print to your printer, which is pretty awesome. And a lot of people, and I've set it up in many businesses, that utilize this. Also fantastic. So why does printing suck in Linux? Well, so many people are so used to just going to the printer download website and hitting download this specific driver for that model and then running it and then they have all these fancy tools to do like scanning and faxing and all these things multifunction printers do. Well, that just really isn't flushed out very well in Linux depending on the manufacturer. Some it's pretty decent like HP, some just kind of suck like Canon printers and uh, certain Epson printers also are kind of a nightmare to deal with. So it, it just depends on what you got. And by no means am I saying HP is perfect because there's HP printers that don't work for crap either. And that's why down in the description, I listed a whole bunch of references so you can go and find your printer. Now I recommend using at least two or three of these sites to go. There's no definitive compatibility list because openprinters.org, which is probably the most well-known one, doesn't even have my printer that the cat is sitting on back here. But it works great. So once you get this service installed, you're able to print to it. What about the other functions? Well, that's when like HP Lib comes in. And I go the link down in the description below as well. And you install this to get much of the other functionality that you want from your system or printer. Uh, it's just, uh, again, mileage will vary depending on the printer. Some of them just aren't very compatible, especially the lower end multifunction printers have less compatibility than your higher end printers. And also that's not to say that Linux drivers or Linux specific things don't exist, uh, such as I think Xerox has written some Linux based drivers that work uh, decent to where you have more of that fancy interface when going to print in a Linux system. However, this is more on the high end of printing. This is your printers that cost tens of thousands of dollars and sit in your business not so much for your home users. So I'm not gonna be mentioning much of that today. Uh, I do wanna go ahead and just clarify. There are certain Linux drivers, but for the most part, home users and home printers have a little bit of a struggle here. And you know, I'm not gonna deny individual multifunction printers in Linux isn't ideal by any means. But with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into CUPS install and then also utilizing CUPS and adding your printer. Okay, to start out with here, let's go ahead and install the CUPS service so we can provide printing support across our whole home network and also our home PC. So we'll do sudo apt install CUPS, or if you're using a different package manner, CUPS is pretty much standard across the board. Once it's done, then you just need to enable the service just doing sudo system control enable CUPS, and then just do system control start CUPS. With this done, you've enabled and started the CUP service, and we can now exit our terminal. Once CUPS is started, we just simply launch in localhost colon 631 is the CUPS port. With that, we can easily add our printer by just going add printers, add printers, and then just simply selecting your printer out of your list here. Locally installed printer, so if you're using a USB printer, it's going to be local. If you're using a network attached printer, obviously network attached. Let's say I wanted to use my network attached printer, I'll just go ahead and hit continue. 
Please note, remember cups is specifically for printing, not scanning and other things. So with this, I would do this and say, I wanna share this printer with other people using this computer. So we'll hit continue. And then you can use the dr driver list driver out of here. However, I don't like to do that. I like to make sure it's not already in the model deal. And if you scroll through here, I'll be able to find it. Other things, if you have a PPD file that you wanna manually load that driver, you can actually choose the file and do it here and then simply click add printer. I've already added this printer, so we're gonna go over to printers and see the after effects. Now I use the PostScript driver, which if you're installing a printer, I always recommend PostScript instead of like PCL5 or PCL6, just because you're gonna have better performance and better compatibility. So with this, we can load up our documents, print directly to our print server here. And you know, if I'm on a Windows machine or a Mac machine, it doesn't matter if this computer is on, I know I can print directly to it and it will reroute all my print jobs to my print, my printer back there, which is awesome. So hey, uh, there is CUPS in a quick breakdown. If you wanna know more about CUPS, definitely check out all the how-to guides right here at the home. It, it really breaks down all the different things you can do in CUPS, but I just wanted to show you the nitty gritty just to get you going. So with CUPS out of the way, what if we wanna do faxing and scanning and all these other things that a multifunction printer would do? Well, I'm using an HP printer, so let's go ahead and show you HP Lib. So with printing out of the way, I didn't touch really on scanning. Scanning, which is part of that HP Lib uh, thing I just mentioned, it doesn't work very well almost across the board, sadly to say. I haven't found much success here. I've even had to trick and run services and do a lot of hacky workarounds. I know my mother-in-law, she wanted to utilize her scanner and she had a document feeder much like the printer back here. And you'd put a stack of papers in there and a lot of times it would just scan the first paper into like a PDF and then it would just omit the rest of the stack, which was super aggravating. I spent several hours on this and she was using a brother printer at the time for this. So uh, I know on my HP, I, I do have a lot better result where I am able to scan a stack. Just know that you will have, a, you know, mileage will vary when it comes to scanning. It's not great. And uh, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and tell you, hey, everything works because it really doesn't when it comes to this aspect of printers on Linux. Now, HD, HP Lip is actually meant for an all-in-one. You just click download here, it downloads a .run file. With it downloaded, you need to go into your terminal. So let's go back to our terminal here. We'll go into our downloads. And if we do a listing, you'll see HP Lip .run. Make sure you chmod plus x HP Lip .run. With this, it makes it executable so we can do the next command, which is dot forward slash hplip dot run and enter. Now I'm using an experimental build of Debian, which is using SID, which is above testing. So there's gonna be some incompatibility. So if you're using an LTS version of pretty much any distro, you're gonna be just fine. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes. And then do I want automatic, custom, or queue for quit? Now, if you saw an error in here, I highly recommend doing custom, which I see an error. I know this is gonna fail out because I'm using such an experimental version of Debian. But if I was using like Debian stretch nine, I know I could probably do automatic and it would just set it all up for me as long as I just followed the prompt. But let's go ahead and do custom for this install. Uh, so we'll say yes, is this the correct one? It is. Do you, would you like to install custom discrete drivers or class drivers? Um, I like to do uh, discrete drivers. And you can select HP lip options to enable. Do I want to do that? Yes. Graphic user interface, QT4. I know there's QT4 issues with this specific thing, so I want to hit no. That means I won't get any graphic user interfaces. Sad face. Uh, QT5, I know that is installed, so let's see if we can't install QT5. And then PC Synfax support. No, I don't use faxes. Scanning support, yes. And then documentation, yes as well. 
Then we simply enter our password and let's go ahead and hit enter for continue. App Armor is detected if you're on Debian or pretty much any other system and you have App Armor, it'll tell that and it'll make a profile for you. You want this. If you're on RHEL or Fedora, those types of ones use SE Linux and I believe it can also make profiles for it. So it'll say, hey, missing dependencies, do you want to install these? Yes. And we'll go ahead and hit yes to this as well. It says there's already an older version of HPLIP installed in here. I want to remove and install this version. So we'll put I. All right, so it just finished the uninstallation. That took a little bit of time, actually. It took about five to 10 minutes. And now we are actually going through and doing the full install of HPLIP. All right, here we go. Moment of truth, the install and build is done. Now it's doing it. So do you want to check for HPLIP updates? Uh, I'm going to go no, I don't like updates. <laughs> uh, HP plugins need to be installed and updated. Do you want to install plugins? Yes. Um, let's go ahead and do GUI mode. If I completely got rid of all my Qt installs, then I probably should do the interactive mode and not GUI, but let's go ahead and do GUI. Let's live on the wild side here. So let's go ahead and hit next. So I got an error saying it can't contact the key server. Do you want to still install the program? Just yes, you're just not validating it. So we're just gonna go ahead and install it and agree. With this, uh, we need to install a proprietary plugin. Please enter the password and root. So we'll do that. Plugin install successful. Now would you want to re restart or replug? Uh, I'm going to say restart because it's a network printer. So, restart. So with this, it should be installed. We probably need to do a reboot here, so we'll just do sudo reboot. So right now, I'm having a bug where it's downloading and installing the HP plugin using HP-plugin or HP-setup to set up the device. Even though my device is supported, it has the both the scanning and faxing capabilities from Linux and I'm doing it all from HP lib guess what it's still not working we have a bug in this uh, at least from my version I'm sure if I was an LTS version this would work just fine but again this is just some of the things you get when you're on the bleeding edge so to speak yeah, there's not much I can do here. I pretty much just have to resign to the fact that I'm just going to use it as a printer and not the scanning function. If I want scanning, I will use a different computer here at the house. This is mainly just my production machine anyways. I'm not really taking scans into it, so not that big of a deal. But just know you may experience crap like this that you're seeing on the screen if you're on like a rolling release or the bleeding edge in Linux because a lot of these packages just aren't tested all that well, especially with the bleeding edge or the latest and greatest. So obviously in businesses, you're running LTS releases and older releases typically. So it's not that big of a deal. But since this is where we're at and you're a home user, just know yeah, you might run into this if you're on the latest and greatest. So with that done, I'm leaving this here. I'm done for the night. I've spent probably a good hour trying to hack around, get this scanning functionality to work. And I'm throwing in the towel. I'm running, I'm running on this experimental version of Debian and it's just not really meant to work on experimental versions of Debian or rolling releases in many instances. And I just have to accept that or go to an LTS release of Linux, which I'm not gonna do. So there we go. Printing in Linux and all of its horrible glory. But with all that said, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. What did I get wrong? Because honestly, printing in Linux is so complex and there's a lot of things that go into it. Honestly, I really like just using the cup service, utilizing the print functionality out of it because it is a very, very good uh, universal thing where you can get printing working on almost every printer out there. I've yet to run on a printer I couldn't actually get printing. I have had issues with multifunctions as I've already gone into in depth. But other than that, you know, hey, printing in Linux is easy. 
just some of the multifunction features is not. But with all that said, a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, these videos wouldn't be made. And I'll see you in the next video.